Race number 14, the second of the day in the Louis Vuitton America's Cup qualifier. Sweden and New Zealand passing very, very tight to each other in the pre-start, Ken. Yeah, setting up uh, similar. I think the way the starting box is shaped, where the land is, what the breeze direction is, for sure, uh, the boat that's first in, and this time the Swedes, are setting up early back to the line again. It'll be very interesting to see if New Zealand dials down and tries that He's big sweep and that hook maneuver. They have plenty of time left, 30 seconds, and up on the foils, and here they come. Absolutely steaming, aren't they? At 37 knots. 20, and, uh, 25 seconds to go. They're very close to the line. So this is a tough spot. If they can get a hook underneath and get back up toward the line, Artemis could be early. Let's see if Berling can pull this off and not get too deep in the box. This is now a time and distance. Time and distance. Can Berling get through the wing wash of Artemis, or has Artemis done a great job of defending that lured position and getting off the line, but actually over early. They actually pulled the trigger slightly early. Unforced error, and they're going to have to drop two links behind New Zealand. Wow. So yesterday it was a penalty for the Kiwis for an early start in their race against the British. This time it's Nathan Outridge who's pulled the trigger just a little bit too soon, fractionally soon. Fractionally soon, and they have to stop and get two boat lengths behind Emirates Team New Zealand to shake this penalty off. That is, I think, Swedish fans are cringing at this stage. Had the start completely won and just literally pulled the trigger too quick. You see them sailing away. They're trying their hardest to slow the boat down to get two boat lengths behind. They still haven't done it. They still have that penalty on, so they have to plunge it and they should shake it now. There it goes. It has to be one of the most frustrating things out there, deliberately slowing your boat down when you know you've stolen a march on your rival. It does not come naturally for any, for any of us, and especially any of these guys, but a big break for Team New, Emirates Team New Zealand, who were, Burling was boxed out pretty effectively by Outer Ridge in that start. Big break by uh, kind of giving that advantage right back again. Yes, happy there. And as we know, these two boats have plenty, plenty of speed. They've exhibited that already in the first couple of days of racing out here on the Great Sound. Kiwis with three wins. France, Japan and Britain have been seen off. They lost to Oracle Team USA. Good pace from the Swedes, too, as they look to overhaul this advantage. Again, this is a bit of positioning coming into this gate. They're most likely going to see the Swedes jive onto starboard in order to get a split and go off on the other side of the race course, and there they go on cue. This is where the Kiwis have been so smooth going around these bottom marks with serious pace, never touching the water. They look... Uh, Smooth as we've seen so far on any of the boats on average, and, and uh, they certainly didn't let us down right there either. A split course then, and off they go in their separate directions. Go, boys. Go, boys. Anytime. <laughs> so we're going to have another quick look at the, uh, at the start. And this is where the penalty came, of course. The New Zealanders really went down there. Uh, what Sweden did very well is they got down, it's called the ley line. They got really deep and kind of pinned New Zealand down. Six seconds to go, and you see him start to turn toward the line. Don't turn yet, don't turn yet. And oh, if he, I mean, over by inches. Now, for the, us sitting here, it's really difficult to see, but it is absolutely GPS within a couple inches of what the uh, umpires see in the box. So that is not a human eye that's doing that. That's actually done technologically. So we're pretty sure that is very, very accurate. It would have to be because the that margins was, are so tiny. That, that was, not to sound like American, but that was inches. Oh. Good one forming top right. Now we'll see two different strategies here on deck.
the uh, wing trimmer is actually has a winch and a rope in his hand. The wing trimmer, uh, if we get on Emirates Team New Zealand at some stage, is actually sitting below deck looking to, we don't know what the controls look like, but apparently uh, kind of fiddling around with hydraulic controls all the time and not having that rope and that winch. Turn, turn. Just incredible shots, aren't they? Yeah, not the smoothest, but they're not slow either. They're right in the hunt. Nobody's, right. nobody's pulling out. Nobody's uh, dropping back right. here, as you right expect on, from these kind of two heavyweights. They don't like it. Artemis going 34 knots up wind. Two and in left. That's fast. Take it up when you can. Down. The Swedes making a really good fist of their chase here, finding a lot of speed, a lot of speed up one right. Consistently, as we look at those speeds, consistently two or three knots faster. Now, are their angles as tight as Team New Zealand's? Team New Zealand looked to be struggling going into that. Was a very uncharacteristic slow turn. Right there, down right in this area. It's like he's playing a video game with uh, with hydraulic controls. That's twist, that's in and out. That's fascinating. That's the first time we've seen that control box uh, in his hand. He's always down low in the cockpit, and that's how he's controlling not just the in and out of the wing, but the twist, the, uh, the camber and the actual twist of the wing. Very interesting. And we got a real race on our hands here all of a sudden after that one bad tack by the Kiwis. And the two boats on collision course here as well. 40, 50, 60 knot closing Lay speed line there. coming up. <laughs> 10 seconds. You do not That's want to be the meat in that sandwich. <laughs> Sweets are going quick. They're on average going 30 knots all the time upwind, which is a number that we're not quite used to. Now, Christian Camp, are you used to going 30 knots upwind? Is this a standard number for you guys? Yeah, we, uh, that, that's kind of the numbers uh, we've been uh, seeing the last year or so uh, with these efficient foils. So that's pretty standard in this breeze, uh, to be honest. There's obviously, like you said, a bit of angle in it as well. But uh, it's an interesting situation coming up at the top mark now. Well left. Artemis dipped last time they met. And uh, they're coming in on starboard now, very similar to the BAR uh, Group Ma race. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens up here in this intersection. But below the ley line, and, and New Zealand got across barely. Uh, before, yeah, I think uh, I think Artemis can wind it up onto ley line if they want to. Ah, I see. So they're kind of uh, coming down and trying to yeah. play a little possum here, going into the top gate. The Kiwis do a nice job of slowing down so they can still make the other side. So that's uh that was very good strategy for both teams good pressure, to get around as line. effectively as possible. Push, boys. Good Once pressure again, on the they were barely inches apart from each other as they crossed and the course split once more heading downwind to the leeward gate and this is a fascinating duel yet again after the first race where we saw that ebb and flow between the british and the french the Good Swedes pressure here. and the kiwis bringing the same kind of drama the same kind of tense excitement the Swedes really tried to set up the Kiwis going into that mark, and the Kiwis did not fall for it. Yes, they came out behind, but the Swedes were trying to kill them at that stage. They were trying to put the kill on them, and uh, the Kiwis didn't fall for it and stayed close in the race. But I'll tell you what, the Swedes are showing serious pace. 37 knots to 33 for the, for the Kiwis. I think that's Only what just one and in right here, okay? If you're just going 40 knots out of the race course all the time. Stop your eyeballs popping out. Oh my gosh. Well, it was instructive, wasn't it, to hear Nathan Aldridge talking uh, ahead of today about the fact that they've not been happy with their performance. Yes, they did a great job in seeing off the Americans and they beat Japan, but losing to Coming Great Britain and France, yep. two relative underdogs. They were not impressed with that, and they had a lot to put Coming straight. Quick. There is no shortage of motivation. Not much in it. The Kiwis are not going slow right now. They seem to have kicked into overdrive up in that high 30s. That seems to be the number downwind. Not a great job by, the, by the Swedes. 
Oh, you see how these things are becoming incredibly costly. And look at that. From 50 meters behind to 100 ahead on one bad jump. Another potential pass. It's going to be closer than the, than the 100 looks right now, though. Starboard tack. Swedes coming across and closing the distance very quickly on Emirates Team New Zealand, who is likely laying the gate. If they can get across, huge advantage to Emirates Team New Zealand. Roy's pedal, pedal faster, pedal faster. We've got to get across. Both of them bearing down as low as they can and just getting across the Kiwis. Pivotal moment in this race. Well, this is match racing just as we like it, isn't it? As they turn to head upwind for the final time. These two really locked in battle. There is nothing between them. Dead even heat. Fingernails being bitten with three passes so far in this race. from the Cyclos, the small, men small providing all the pedal power. If anything. Again, another. all these crosses are crucial now. Only 21 knots You're of boat speed on the Kiwi boat. 30 plus on Artemis again. They're probably bearing down for a bit of a dip. This is all about positioning now and just pace and not making that crucial mistake, that splash down. Okay, coming quite quick here. Artemis is quick. Artemis is quick. They're, they're consistently four knots faster or so than the Kiwis here going upwind. Downwind, not pretty even boats, but upwind, Artemis is fast. And aside from what happens in this race, Ken, over the longer term, over potentially the Challenger playoffs and, and, and heading into the, the match itself, how much of that will be a concern to the he Kiwis? Well, not still. just the Kiwis, everybody. Listen, you're, you can't imagine how much studying is happening of all this, uh, of all this tape and all these video and all these numbers uh, from all the teams. And you know, if you're a team competing to try to go win the America's Cup, and you see another team going 30, 31 knots up win. Wow. We've got a high bar all of a sudden. We've got, we got to dial down here on Artemis. We're going to force the Kiwis to do a radical turn down. Here we go, closing speed of 65 knots. Coming up on boundary. Anytime. Well, you've used go. the phrase on a few occasions, haven't you, Ken, out here? Hand to hand combat. And that is just what it is out there on the water. Who would have thought in our lifetime we'd ever see aggressive maneuvers like that? Yet another lead change. Huge bearway. Artemis making it as difficult as possible for the Kiwis. And Burling just, again, doesn't fall for it. The fast dial down keeps it fully in control. It's like a lethal game of chicken. Again, the top gun, Goose. We need more speed, Goose. Coming up to the top mark. Can the Kiwis do one more tack and lay? They will have starboard tack advantage as they come across. We have not seen the end of the hand-to-hand -hand combat in this race, I guarantee it. He's going about go. There's Ian Percy, the tactician for the Swedes. Here comes the Kiwis. They will no get duck. across. Nice little game. Christian, it looked like you a bit him? of a right-hand shift at the top of the course, or how, how are you seeing the wind playing out? Yeah, no, I, I completely agree in that right hand uh, in the end there. Uh, the Kiwis seem to be riding Not a nice hit on the, on the import tank after they dipped out of this. And, and they are, they're in a bit of a righty phase here. So they did a good job on that. Um, It'll be interesting, it's still not over here. Uh, be interesting to see what happens at the top. The Kiwis look like they're, they're taking a small header there, so I'm not sure they're laying. Now, was that, a, was that a hopeful Christian camp, or was that the unbiased media uh, Christian camp 
Hey, this, this, is, this is the guy who uh, who loves uh, yacht Did racing. Uh, and this again? is one of the better yacht races I've seen in a while, so this is awesome. Okay, so the Kiwis are going to have to tack again to get around this gate. As soon as they tack, they are on port tack. Can they get across? This is the moment of the race. Can they have a nice, a efficient tack and get across port starboard? Are they going to have to tack back a second time? I think they've just done enough. Let's Not a huge amount in it, but they've come through. There is no apparent button push from the Swedes. The Swedes think they got across okay, and here we are, dead heat yet again. Once more the split course, and once more the drag races. They head off in their separate directions. Downwind for the final time. What a race this is turning out to be. Relentless workload for the grinders. And when they're not grinding, they are charging across the platform and attending to other duties and decisions, decisions all the time as well as the jibe from Emirates Team New Zealand puts them once again on, on track to get up close and personal with the Swedes. A little bit of a gain. It looks like a little darker water out on the Swede side of the race course there. Listen, that could be a lucky break, that can be a good good timing, good opportunity, or it could be just smart sailing. They were kind of set up by the top, that top gate. Uh, who was going to go to what side of the race course? We've had eight passes so far in this race. Do you think? <laughs> it's a game of noughts and crosses out there. Well, it, I have to say, there's a lot of there's a lot of talk from traditionalists as to whether this is real match racing. Eight passes in a race, hand to hand combat, uh, dial downs, um, tr you know, trickery at the top mark. It's, you know, one little mistake. Look at the Swedes have kind of an average jive, and all of a sudden there might be our ninth pass coming up. You never know. Good pressure here. Starboard tack, Artemis racing on starboard tack. They will have right away if the Kiwis can't get across. Remember, these guys grinding. For those of you dialing into our broadcast for the first time, everybody grinding, pumping hydraulic pressure into the system to be used to control every bit of information. Yeah, stuff wide. on the boat. Foils under the water, foils above okay. the water. Lay line now. This is not over by any means. Starboard tack coming back to Emirates Team New Zealand if they don't lay this gate. If they do lay this gate, they have the bottom gate, they have an advantage. I don't think they're going to be even close. So this will be one more port starboard. Both boats have to Fast jive build. one more time. Fast build. Well, a short while push, back, push, they push. really picked up a, a surge of speed, didn't they? Almost approaching 40 knots, but now heading for the final gate. Still nothing in it between these two. Starboard tack, Emirates Team New Zealand, but it looks like Artemis might just get across. There is an overlap, so Emirates Team New Zealand does have the right to jive inside, but that jive maneuver is going to be slow, and Artemis gets around the outside. Looks like the Swedes. Oh, Might just job. have it here, and now New Zealand are almost stalling. Bad job by Emirates Team New Zealand, but in a really tough spot. Uh, they, they came off their foils, they got high, they got low. That was a tough spot. Artemis didn't exactly right, but man, no guts, no glory in this. Well, I think at this point, the Swedes just beginning to recognize that the victory was going to be theirs as the Kiwis plunged down into the water. The Kiwis had inside overlap. Artemis had to stay clear, had to give them room to round the mark, even though they were coming in, uh, they were coming in on starboard attack, but that doesn't matter. Uh, they had to pull off the perfect jive on New Zealand and didn't quite do it. Wait a second, we have a penalty on the Swedes. You keep an eye on him, Riddle. I didn't even see the flag that was hoisted. I did not. With any luck, we're going to be able to hear from no the chief way. umpire shortly. No way! No way! Oh, you've got some angry guys in Sweden right now. I thought they gave plenty of room to the Kiwis going around that mark, but it appears that there's a penalty on Sweden. We're going to get Richard Slater in here when we can. It's taking a little while to work itself through here, and could there be another dramatic late twist to the tail as they bear down on the finishing line? 
The Swedes still with the penalty. You What's the ruling? You hear some bad, some angry Swedes out there right now. They are very surprised at that call. All of a sudden, Emirates Team New Zealand will get the win. So the Swedes having to bear away from the finish line and uh, Emirates Team New Zealand cross over and still no ruling from the chief umpire. Let's hear from Richard Slater now. Yeah, hi. Uh, at the Leward Gate, we had a port starboard between New Zealand and Sweden. Wow. I am not one to disagree with the umpires because I've gotten in trouble in my sailing career every time I've tried to disagree with the umpires, but we're going to have to go back and look at that again. I, I saw it as uh, I saw it as clear. I think I think the Swedes could have actually crossed if they wanted to. I, and, and I also think Emirates Team New Zealand may have they're bearing away. They're bearing away. They're bearing away. I, I, I got to tell you. I think that's a tough call against the Swedes right there, but uh, I think these guys agree. Yeah, we took the idiots down. Well, high drama completely rubbish. and big, big controversy here. The Swedes will be livid. And in the meantime, Peter Burling of Emirates Team New Zealand will be a mighty relieved man because it looked for all the world as if their challenge was done. Yeah, you were just yelling at Bottom line was it was one of the most dramatic races we've ever seen, if not the most dramatic race we've ever seen in uh, in this modern day America's Cup uh, format.